Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Holly. And welcome back to episode two, where we're still going to be speaking about motivation. Today we've got Brian back with us. Thanks for joining us again, Brian. An absolute pleasure to be back with you girls. Today we'll probably be talking about, um, well, we actually had a conversation earlier yeah. about driving. Yeah. Um, and most of our year started that, started yeah, learning, learning passed our theory test. Yeah, quite a lot of us. How are you feeling about driving? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine when I'm out with my instructor, but when yeah. it comes to going out with my mum and dad, I feel... A bit more nervous? I feel a bit more nervous, yeah, definitely. But it's like the fear is kind of holding me back yeah. from doing it. I don't feel as confident, no. that's for me anyway. Yeah, definitely. I've spoken to some other people and it's like they love it. It's something that we all want to do, we get, get yeah. out of our own freedom. That's but holding it's, us back yeah, a bit, the yeah. Fear, the fear, and I think as well, you just don't have the motivation sometimes. Yeah, to along do with it. all the other things we've got going on as well. Yeah, and I feel like you feel like that as well with school. Yeah, 100%. Like the motivation just, it just isn't there as well. And I think. The Sitting down yeah. and um, I know when I sit down after going to work or anything like that, the last thing I want to do is sit down and do a study in uh -huh. for a, an hour at a time or yeah, two hours. No, 100%. And your mum's telling you, study, study, and you're like, oh, I just want to go to bed I know, or I know. go into my phone. I know, and I think as well, sometimes it gets to that point and you think, I'm so tired, but if, like, what if I revise, what if I spend this time revising and I fail? Yeah, what if I've done all that work and I sit down in my prelim or my exam and I fail? And you just feel so and you even think, well, less what was the point? What was the point in what, what was the point in revising when I was going to fail anyway? Yeah. That's what. Yeah, I think quite a lot of people do feel like that sometimes. Definitely. Brian, have you got anything to say how to help that or? Absolutely. It's really interesting hearing you speaking because I think both of those things have got a very similar, from a psychology point of view, they've got a similar base, haven't they? You know, as you said, you both want to drive, but then you've got this one place where you are motivated, which is when you're out with your instructor, because that's like regular, but when you go out with somebody else, like a parent or a big brother or a big sister or whoever it might be, the, the fear starts to get in the way. Yeah. Then we turn into school and it's exactly the same. You know, as you said, you know, you know you want to pass these exams. I don't think there's anybody in fourth, fifth or sixth year that's going, I hope I feel everything. No. You know, they might be thinking, oh my God, I am going to feel everything, but they won't be thinking, I hope I feel yeah, everything. Yeah. And I think it's that fear that gets in the way. Uh, when I speak to parents, and I've spoken to the parents of this school, in fact, and uh, they always look at me a bit funny when I say this, but I always say that I don't think there's any such thing as a lazy uh, young person when it comes to like their exams. What it actually there is is a scared young person. When we experience fear, and this is exactly what you've been talking about, um, we, we go into, well, there's four different places. We don't have time to cover them all today. Um, in, in any detail, but I'll quickly go over them. They're fight, flight, freeze and fold. Uh, and basically what happens is, is fight and flight, we are either like, so I bet, you, you probably know the names, we won't say them on, and I bet you they're, they're present in fourth, fifth and sixth year. They're probably there in S1, 2 and 3 as well. But the ones that have decided to fight their fear, and what that means is these will be the people who are probably like wild, like I've studied for seven hours last night and mm -hmm. you know, I, I take it those people are in your year, yeah, I take yeah, it there's some yeah. of them. Like there's a mix like, of people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's actually driven by fear as well. It's like, what if I fail so I have to study more? Yeah. Then you get, I think, what you're more talking about, which is what if I fail, oh my God, I can't go anywhere near mm -hmm. that, which yeah. is the flight response. Yeah. And I think when people start to accept and realise that that fear is real, and start to acknowledge it because sometimes we do criticise ourselves or maybe I'm lazy, maybe I'm just lacking motivation but it's not, it's actually like your brain working like amazingly well at trying to get you to avoid a danger and ultimately it can actually even go into freeze and fold and, and freeze is like when you're like just I don't know what to do, mm -hmm. you know that type of way and then fold is like when it can get very, very emotional. That's like a very, very extreme mental health problem. But when we get to there, but some people may even experience that. I think uh, you were saying, Holly, before when I talk about freeze right enough that <laughs> I think you said that your English dissertation had gone through a little bit of a freeze. We, we're good through yes. it, we can talk about but uh, it frozen. Well, for a couple months, um, I had a deadline for my English dissertation and I was sitting there and I was like, oh, she's explained how to do it. Yeah. I still don't know how to do it. So that, oh, it's only a couple months away. I'll, I'll get it done yeah. nearer the time and I can figure it out then. So a couple months down the line came and I sat there and I was like, still don't know how to do this. And it came a the day and she asked me, where is it? Where is it? Everyone else had like kind of started it at least yeah. or got halfway through it and I was nowhere near it. And I got a home, uh, the homework letter home yeah. and I got like taken out of the class and they were like, that's not like you, why have you not? And I was like, oh no, I'll get it done, like kind of pushing it back again. Mm -hmm. And I went home and I spoke to my mum and she was like, 
ask for help. You're not going to get anywhere without asking somebody, like, can you just show me a little bit of pointer on this or a pointer on that? And I was like, okay. So I went back into school with more of a positive mindset and I said, right. So I went to the teacher and I was like, is there any chance we can meet today? Mm -hmm. And I came home that day feeling a lot better about it. And the next game day when I had three periods for study, I got like 1,500 words done. And I think just the main takeaway point that I got from that was just if you would just would have asked instead mm -hmm. of being stubborn and thinking that you could have did this by yourself, you would have got it done a lot quicker instead of stressing yourself out about it. Yeah, 100%. So important though. I, I think it's such a good story because I think the, the way to deal with fear and what we do with fear is that when we're anxious and we're worried, this is by the way just true of any mental health, mm -hmm. not just about exams, is that one of our biggest anxieties comes when we hide it. So the more you hide it, the worse it gets. Yeah. Uh, we, nobody can help you if they don't know what's going on. And I know that there'll be the fear, which I imagine you, you ran, and I'm sure, you know, Emily, you probably ran it as well. Uh, but what if I say and they give me any trouble? You know, mm -hmm. what if they say and they shout at me? What if they say and they, they say, no, you meant to be here, and now I've got even more work to do, and I didn't realise. Mm -hmm. But all you're doing is standing still. When you're not asking for help, you're just standing still. And it's something I say about all mental health and all of these different things is the most important thing you can do, you did, which is to get up and have the courage, and I know it takes courage, but is to just tell someone. Um, I, I think that there's there's probably a future video actually on how to do that because that can be a really big step yeah. for some people. It's what I imagine a big step for you, yeah. but it makes such a difference. And it, we're not asking you just to tell anyone, but if you can choose the right person. So sometimes, you know, I'm sure Armadale is full of amazing teachers who would put their arms around you and give you a hug if you asked for help <laughs> and nobody that would moan at you or say, well, I don't know what you want me to do. But, you know, it's not every teacher maybe isn't the best teacher to say to, but yeah, could you yeah. say to another person or somebody else or whatever it is. I think the tips on today, you know, and, and lack of motivation are understand that fear quite often is the reason why we don't have motivation. Yeah. It's not that we're lazy. It's not that we don't want it enough. Quite often we just get trapped in a fear cycle. And when we're in that fear cycle, the best way out of that fear cycle is actually to do what we just talked about, which is to ask for help. I know it's a huge step, it maybe even feels like part of the fear cycle, but it's that one step forward that can make, as you prove, you know, a, a massive, massive difference. The thing about motivation in both of the videos that we've done is, is that it's not going to fix itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it needs good decisions, it needs people. We're going to do a whole video on making good decisions in the future. Um, but what I mean by a good decision is looking at things, being really honest with yourself and then doing what needs to be done. Yeah. But nobody can do it for you. And I know that's a big thing, but you know, your S4, S5, S6, your 15, 16, 17, maybe some people touching on 18. Yeah. It, it, it's a, it does pass over to you as you come into this part of your life that you have to be the ones that step it forward. But well done for doing that. I'm not saying these tips are easy for everybody to hear the problem. Well, that's easy for you to say. But you're already proven that you can do it, yeah. you know, and, and I think that for me is the most important thing. So I think, it, you know, just because I can remember them in my head, you know, the, the summary for me on our four tips uh, is very much, you know, as we said today, ask for help and realise that, you know, that, that there, there has to be uh, a fear base that's hiding your motivation. Sometimes that makes you study too much, sometimes it's not enough. Um, to minimise your distractions, switch off those notifications and find your why. It's not always easy, especially when you're in fourth year, to find that why. Yeah. Um, that's not always right there. By fifth year, you should at least have a well. I want to go that direction by sixth year if, you, if you're still... So, which sometimes people are, but I have no idea. There's maybe somebody in your year that's still like that. But once you know your why, even if it's just to make yourself proud, then that's, that's what you need. And I hope these tips help you uh, and, and hopefully yeah, yeah. the year. But you have to make the change. I think, yeah, definitely. Now that we... I've got the tips, I think, when we're struggling with motivation, they're easy to remember, just... One little step forward and yeah. you're already halfway exactly. there. Exactly, Baby that's steps. what, that's what happened to you. So yeah, 100%. exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us again, Brian. An absolute pleasure. And we'll see you in the next episode of Mental Health Matters.